Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Noob Readers. My name is Kiran, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the Little Garden arc, which is basically the ninth arc in the One Piece manga series. Now, this arc starts off from chapter 115 in volume 13 and ends at chapter 129 in volume 15. Now, I have enjoyed this arc a lot and rated it as 4 out of 5 stars, and it is way better than the last arc, so I just can't wait to talk about this with you all. So, without further ado, Let's begin the review. So the act starts off where all of our crew members with Vivi and Karu are going towards this little garden island. And the moment that they reach over there, we get this ominous feeling that, yeah, this island is not a good place and they should probably not leave their ship. But of course, Luffy being Luffy decides that, no, I'm going to go and explore this place. And he asks Sanji to pack him a lunch. And what was unexpected was when Vivi says that, why don't I also join with you? So yeah, this, this girl is like really, really fearless. So yeah, they both leave. And of course, afterwards, Zoro also decides to leave because he also wants to take a look. And Sanji say, tells him that, why don't you just bring something back for us to cook? And then Zoro says this thing that, yeah, I'll, I'll hunt something that even you won't be able to hunt. And then Sanji gets really offended and it's like, you know what, let's have a hunting competition. And then they both leave. And this is the point which is just so damn funny to me when we look at the expressions of both Usopp and Nami and the way they both are so miserable because they're like, why do these people have to do that all the time? This entire sequence was just done so well and it was just so damn funny that, yeah, I mean, I, I really, really enjoyed that. So afterwards, we get this information that this particular island is still in the dinosaur era because of the crazy weather conditions on the Grand Line. And then they tell us that every island can have their own culture. It could be far into the future also, right? We can also have modern cultures, like modern societies. And what do modern societies have? Technology. And then I'm like, what if this entire story is not just fantasy? What if it's science fiction? I mean, right? This literally intrigued me so much. And then I started imagining what if this particular devil fruit is actually something that's like created by these people who have like better technology. What if this devil fruit is actually the serum as in Attack on Titan? What if it's something like that? What if people are actually creating it? And yeah, I mean, this idea sounded really interesting to me. Now, I don't know, maybe I'm just, you know, theorizing this and maybe it's just nothing like that. But yeah, I'm, I'm really interested in knowing what Oda is going to do with this information that he has given us. Luffy and Vivi are being saved by this giant named Dory. And of course, the, on the other hand, both Nami and Usopp are asked by this giant named Brogy to give him the alcohol when the entire time both Nami and Usopp are just thinking that Brogy is just probably gonna kill them and eat. These giants, both Brogy and Dory, are from the place that's called the Elbaf and they both are here because of a dispute or you can say a fight that they had like hundred of years ago and they and right now they just don't even remember what happened but they are just still fighting whoever is gonna win would probably be the one who's correct because of the gods of Elbaf and I really liked the expressions of both Luffy and Usopp if you look at their expressions and if you'll compare it with the girls like both Vivi and Nami have completely opposite expressions when they get to know about this information I think both Usopp and Luffy think that this is a very like good thing or you can say a very brave thing to do and you can definitely see the expression of Usopp because he's so impressed because he's the one who wants to be the brave warrior of the sea and I think this entire encounter with these giants has changed him the most and he's the one who's been affected the most and of course then um, both Brogy and Dory they fight and of course it's another draw because Brogy has the alcohol from Nami and Usopp he decides to give it to Dory and then of course they both come to their own places and when Dory is just drinking it his stomach explodes yeah I mean his stomach ex explodes and he thinks that it is Luffy who's who has basically put something in his drink and that's why he's injured Luffy knew that both Nami and Usopp would not have done anything to the drink and there is someone else on this particular island who who's like plotting this but of course Dory is not gonna listen to whatever that he has to say so he decides to fight because Luffy is just facing a giant he can actually not do anything 
and Dory actually manages to put a skeleton on Luffy and Luffy cannot move and then he goes to have another fight and I think um, this is a fight that's also very interesting from the perspective of Dory. Of course, uh, Dory is the one who's injured so he just cannot fight with the same strength as he had earlier and he ends up getting defeated and this is the point where we get this information that this entire plot was done by the Brock Works members Mr. 3 and Miss Golden Week and of course they are helped by Mr. 5 and Miss Valentine. Now I do really really love the fact when Luffy is just stuck there um, you know under that particular skeleton and he's saying that who is it who is it why because of this particular person is Dory probably gonna die because of him and this is like plotted by someone who this person is and Luffy is just so frustrated and I really liked how Dory says that yeah maybe it's just the god of Elbaf is just not with me today and he is ready to accept whatever his fate is and I think that was something that was really interesting. So of course these four Brockworks members are of course behind it and then we get this entire thing about Mr. 3 and I think Mr. 3 was an interesting character because I, I really liked how the way that he was conversing with Miss Golden Week and the way that he says that yeah, please don't call me Mr. 3 because I don't want you, anyone to know about my code name and the fact that he has a three that that is his hairstyle and, and I find it so funny I'm like yeah dude if you really want to you know not reveal your identity maybe don't have three as your hairstyle so yeah that was so funny but of course he's the one who has created this entire thing he's the one who says that I want to kill both of these giants because they have so much bounty on their heads and I want to take that bounty so I know that I cannot go and directly fight them I, so he cre created this entire strategy that yeah we are going to target get one giant and then they're gonna fight and th that will probably kill one of them and of course because we are going to kind of like create this entire situation so the straw hat pirates they are also gonna be extremely confused and we know that Luffy also has a bounty so he'll probably be able to defeat all of them and get all the money and I do have to say that was an interesting plan Broggy says this thing that I knew from the instant that Dory came to fight that there was something wrong and but I just could not stop to fight because I just could not disrespect him and because he was ready to even accept his death in this particular fight so I didn't want to dishonor him. I really loved this particular dialogue and I think I really enjoyed this particular thing where they just respect each other so much so yeah that was that was really interesting. Mr. 3 manages to capture both Zoro and Nami through his wax clones. I don't know how they did it, but yeah, they actually managed to capture both of them. And of course, afterwards, they managed to capture Vivi also. And he, and then of course, Mr. Three creates his wax thing, which he calls the Candelebra, can Candelebra or something like that, yeah. And he basically wants to create a wax statue of all three of them. And then of course it is revealed that this particular duck that's called Karu and how they were actually trying to hit him to call Vivi so that they can capture Vivi and oh my god I just loved how the duck who's actually so scared 90% of the time he did not say anything because he just didn't want Vivi to be captured and it was just so so sad the way he was just taking all the hits Oda is really good at making us feel emotions for even the animals like I really loved how we had a dog I guess his name was Chow Chow and and of course we have Laboon and here we have the duck so I really love how Oda just gives so much personality to to all these animals also so yeah that was also like really really sweet I find it really interesting the way we see Luffy's weaknesses and I remember the moment that I started reading this particular series I thought that Luffy looks like someone who would have no weaknesses but I think that Oda is actually telling us that yeah this hypnosis or hypnotism I guess is the biggest weakness of Luffy like whenever it comes to hypnosis Luffy has no defenses he literally has no defenses like he tried stopping that candelabra but he could not do anything because golden week she put this color 
trap on him i'm like yeah this is one thing that can be used against luffy at any moment of time so i'm now i'm really really scared for luffy like because he's just so simple minded he can't do anything about it so yeah i'm really curious because i kind of feel that this is one thing that would be take can very seriously by all of luffy's opponents because they would know that yeah this is one thing that luffy has no no defense against and this would probably be the reason that he could be defeated i think so yeah because this is the second time that this has been used on luffy and he he could literally do nothing but here of course i really enjoyed usopp and i think that this is this was usopp's arc he was like actually motivated by the entire story of these giants it was just so so good i really loved how even if he knew that he is nothing in comparison to mr five's bombs but he still did not lose hope and he was just doing his thing and because he knew that the only way to you know protect all of these members is when luffy gets out of this hypnosis so he decides to burn luffy's shirt so that he can remove that color trap that miss golden week put on him i think that was just so brave of usopp to do yeah we know that mr 3 has this wax armor it is wax at the end of the day so he is the one who did all this strategic planning that yeah we'll just burn everything out i just love that and at the same moment he is being pressed by all that weight of miss valentine and she's just constantly increasing the weight and usopp is just there bearing all of that and oh my god i i'm like oh my god usopp you're just so so strong and i think this arc showcases his internal strength he still manages to give all the directions to karu and also luffy and tells him that yeah please go and just burn him so that we can just burn each and everything and we can go out of this particular situation and we can save vivi zoro and of course nami and i just loved how zoro was just like no i'm not gonna die like this i'm not gonna be your wax statue that you want me to be and i would just cut my legs and was just oh my god and i just love zoro because of the way his mind work and he actually starts cutting his legs is just that both luffy and of course usopp comes on time otherwise he would have actually cut his legs and i'm like oh my god zoro i just love his mind i think he's just so damn strong yeah i love that but of course at the end luffy manages to burn everything and yeah everyone saved Sanji is just nowhere to be found through this entire thing. He's just he's just there doing his own thing, but of course he then he's like something is wrong. Something is definitely wrong and I should probably go and look for my crew members where did they go and he actually manages to find the hideout of Brock Works and and he actually gets a call from their leader oh my god i just loved i just loved how sanji was just there in that uh, cubicle thing and he was just sipping tea and then he just suddenly gets a call and he and he gets the call from crocodile mr zero and he says that yeah you know i'm just going to give you this particular eternal post to alabasta and i'm sending it to you and then you have to go to alabasta so now we have the eternal post now everything is sorted and they can just go and yeah and when i really love how when sanji comes back and everyone's just safe and he tells them yeah i have the eternal post for alabasta and then vivi just hugs him and and the way that he calls nami that oh my god you're so pretty so yeah yeah this is just so so sweet it was such a great end that yeah everything is sorted i do feel that was like way too convenient for them yeah that's how oda decided to write it so yeah, it was just so interesting because their weapons were not that sharp i guess after 100 years of battle so yeah dory is okay brogy is okay this was not a fair fight and i think this was like an indication from god that yeah because it was not a fair fight so yeah nobody is dead i really liked how this entire arc can be looked at as a comparison between the relationship of dory and brogy versus sanji and zoro like there's a parallel over there and the reason why both of them are fighting is just the same our giants dory and brogy decides to actually help the crew out to actually be there because they know about this giant goldfish that just does not let anyone 
to go outside of this island so yeah that was also really really cool but i do have to say i remember this particular goldfish because usopp is the one who used to tell these lies to kaya it is actually true that a huge goldfish like that actually exists so i'm like yeah that's interesting that's really interesting so of course the giants actually managed to defeat the goldfish and now our crew is on the way to go to the alabaster island and to actually protect vivi's place here yeah, right before the arc ends we know that nami actually gets sick so nami is just really really sick at this particular moment and that's where this arc basically ends so my final thoughts about this particular arc would be i really enjoyed how this arc was all about the action that was going on and of course we actually managed to stop all these baroque work members and now we have the eternal pose so we can go to the alabaster directly so yeah that was interesting so i'm really looking forward to know what are the plans of the baroque works and how things are going to go in the future so yeah overall it was a nice arc too much action but i do feel that it was really really funny to read too especially the beginning so that's it that's my review what do you guys think about this arc do let me know in the comments down below and if you like this video don't forget to give it a like and i'll see you in the next one bye bye take care